Hi, this is Tim. Welcome to the Math League YouTube channel. So today we're going to be talking about problem eight from target round 12104. Uh, this was a high school contest that was given out in the 2020-2021 school year. So you'll notice already that I have created a diagram for us, right? So um, probably it's a good idea for me to go ahead and explain a little bit about how I set up the diagram. Right. So what I did is I said uh, I drew myself a circle, right? A circle uh, centered at point A. So I drew the yellow circle. I drew the point A. Point B lies in its interior. I went ahead and drew that on a horizontal line just because it made it easier for me to draw it and for me to see the symmetries that will inevitably uh, come from this diagram. So I've got segment AB extended past B. I drew point C here and then I drew point M, which is the midpoint of BC. Okay, next. I drew my ellipse passing through M with A and B as foci. So I went ahead and drew the ellipse so that BM was the same distance as the distance from A to the rightmost point on the ellipse. All right, now it says point P lies on the circle but not on AB. Now, here's the trick that I use for this problem, right? I looked at this and I said, hey, this is a math contest problem, which means that if they don't tell me where point P has to be, I get to put it anywhere I want, right? So in other words, if the problem is well written, I can basically uh, put P anywhere I want and assume that the answer is gonna be the same no matter where P is. So here's what I did. I drew P directly below A, in other words, making a 90 degree angle with line AB, right? Now, I'm going to go through the solution to this problem using that as my point P, I'll leave it up to you to prove that this actually works no matter where you put P, right? So that's kind of a, a homework problem for you. Anyway, I put P down here and it says a line AP intersects the ellipse at points D and E. So I went ahead and drew D and E in here and the circle again at point P prime. So I drew P prime. X is the intersection of, let's see, lines tangent to the ellipse. So what I did now is I drew my tangents to the ellipse at E and D and I let them intersect at X. Now by the symmetry of this thing, right? The fact that I drew these uh, two red lines at right angles, X is going to have to lie on this horizontal red line. All right, hope you can see why that worked based on the symmetry of the problem. All right, so now we say, we see that point uh, that P X P prime is 100 degrees. We'll come back to that later. That's the last piece of information we're going to use. Uh, but then they say that they want us to compute P B P prime, right? So I went ahead and drew these extra two lines in, line segments in here so that we can figure out what this angle is. All right. Now, again, I'm going to be taking advantage quite extensively of the symmetry of this diagram in order to demonstrate uh, what I need to here. So uh, let's start by talking about why point M was the midpoint between B and C. Right? What that tells us is that MC is the same length as MB. Well, we also know that MB was the same length as this segment over here. What that actually tells us is that the major axis of the ellipse is the same length as the radius of the circle. Now that's going to come in handy because let's take advantage of what we know about an ellipse. There's two main pieces of information about an ellipse that we're going to use here today. Number one is that if I start at either focus of the ellipse and I go out to any point on the ellipse and then back to the other focus, that's going to give me a constant distance, right? So starting at B, going up to M, and then back to A, that in particular is going to give me the same overall distance that I've traveled is if I go from B up to E and then down to A. Now what this does is it helps us with a very important point here, right? AE plus EB is going to be the same as AM plus MB, okay? That's based on what we know about an ellipse. Now AM plus MB, if you take a look at MB, we already said because M is the midpoint of BC that MB is the same as MC, so I'm going to replace my MB with an MC here. But take a look at this. If I have AM plus MC, that's the radius of the circle. And we've already got AP prime as the radius of the circle also, which is AE plus EP prime. Okay, so I started with AE plus EB, and I ended up with AE plus EP prime. What that tells us is that EB is equal to EP prime. Let me go ahead and draw in that extra line there 
So EB is the same length as EP prime. Okay, <clears throat> now that helps us quite a bit because I mean, look at this. We've got ourselves an isosceles triangle here, right? EP prime B is an isosceles triangle. There's one other fact about ellipses that I want to take advantage of. And that is the fact that if I were to sit at point B and uh, shoot a billiard ball or a beam of light or something over to point E, it's going to reflect back to point A. Okay, uh, so that's one of the properties of ellipses that you should know about. And if that's true, well, then what that means is that we have basically uh, the angle of incidence equaling the angle of reflection. Perhaps you've heard that from physics. So let me just draw in a couple of angles that we know are going to be the same angle. This angle and this angle are now congruent. Okay, again, that comes from the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection, right? The angle at which B E intersects with the tangent is going to be the same angle on the other side that EA uh, makes with the tangent as well. Okay, now I've got those two, but take a look at this. XEA is one angle, and the angle that's vertical to that is congruent to it as well. Now, look at what we've got. We have a triangle here, uh, and I should probably go ahead and add an extra, uh, an extra letter here. We'll call this F. So now that I've got this triangle BEF, triangle P prime EF, notice that they have two sides that are the same length. They have angles that are the same, and EF, of course, is the same as itself. What does that tell us? It tells us that BEF is congruent to P prime EF. I've got myself two congruent triangles here. That is wonderful, because if I know that I've got two congruent triangles, then that means I can now put uh, P prime F congruent to BF. Now I know it doesn't look like that on the diagram, but we proved that the triangles are congruent. So there we are. Okay, where am I going to go from this? I also know that this is a right angle at F, and so is this one. Okay. Now, what else does that tell us? XFB is congruent to XFP prime. Right. So if you take a look at those two triangles, we're going to have two congruent triangles there uh, because they have two sides that are the same length. They have, they have uh, two angles that are the same, and then XF is the same as itself. Now, what that tells me is that I have a different pair of angles now that are congruent to each other. This angle and this angle are now congruent. Okay, but wait a minute. I know something about those angles. Uh, we have the entire angle PXP prime was 100 degrees, which means that P prime XA is going to be half of that by symmetry, 50 degrees, but then I split it into two equal parts. And what that tells you is that this angle is 25 degrees. Now, if this angle is 25 degrees, so is this one. And at this point, I can look at triangle X, F, B, and realize that if this is 25 degrees and this is 90 degrees, those add up to 115, how much is left over to make the full triangle? 65. So the angle at B is 65. And once I have an angle of 65 here, I'm going to have another angle of 65 down here because of symmetry. And the entire angle is going to be 130 degrees. And that's how it's done. Hi, everybody. This is Tim. Hope you're enjoying our videos. If so, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, turn on notifications, all that sort of thing. But what I really want to invite you to do is to send us an email at media at mathleague.org. Tell us which problems you'd like to see us cover next in our video series. Take care and see you in the next video.